In the 1970s, action star Bruce Lee wrote an eight-page treatment for an action-packed series about a Chinese martial artist that travels to the old American West. Lee later pitched the idea to ABC, casting himself as the lead, which would have made him the first Asian lead in an American television series at the time. But the studio declined. Shortly after, in 1972, David Carradine would be cast as the lead in an ABC TV series called Kung Fu, which shared many similarities to Lee's pitch. Lee passed away the very next year, and that eight-page treatment was probably tucked in a drawer somewhere and long forgotten. Until, 50 years later, Shannon Lee, his daughter and head of his estate, would fish out her father's script, dust it off, and pitch it once again to several different networks. After half a century, in a time slightly more tolerant of a different perspective, her father's vision would finally see the light of day. That vision was called... Warrior is a historical fiction tale about the seedy underbelly of San Francisco in the 1870s, which was a period of racial tension between the Asian and Irish working class. The story centers around Assam, a Chinese immigrant who migrated to America in search for his sister who fled to California to escape her abusive warlord husband. It turns out that Assam here is a master of kung fu, which of course gets him into all kinds of trouble but also makes him quite popular. And it also turns out that his sister has sort of become a warlord herself. And the leader of the rival Tong that he just joined. Uh oh, spaghetti -o. In case you don't know, because I definitely didn't, a Tong is a Chinese association or secret society in the US frequently associated with underworld criminal activity. Basically, it's a gang, but a kick ass gang with Chinese warriors. And this city's got three of them, all with their own schemes and agendas. We have a rival gang? I hate them! There's also the local law enforcement, and the ever-growing angry Irish population led by this dickhead. One thing I really enjoy about the show is the idea that every character, it seems, is likely to be in someone else's pocket. There's a political chess game that's constantly going on in the background. The city is bleak enough with all the gang violence, and under every violent act is a longer, more strategic game indirectly being played by multiple tyrants mad with power and hungry for more. And of course, lots and lots of kung fu. I would make an everybody was kung fu fighting joke, but yeah, it's stupid. So in this story, you got Assam, who's a fish out of water character in San Francisco. He quickly befriends young June. Did we just become best friends? Yup. You want to go do karate in the garage? Yup. He's his, like his witty best friend, who's the son of Father June, who is the leader of the Hopway Tong. We have a toy who runs the local brothel by day and is also a badass vigilante by night. We got Wang Chow, who sells weapons to the Tongs and is only looking out for himself. He's the best character. Uh, let's be real. You hear me, writers? He's the best character. The best character. <coughs> best <coughs> character. <coughs> you also got the mayor and all the people that are in his circle. You got Leary and his crew. And oh yeah, you got Johnny Law in the form of a classic rookie and seasoned buddy cop combo. And I somehow love them all. Except him. He can kick rocks. I had no idea the show existed. Someone just recommended it to me recently through word of mouth. Uh, I had never heard of it other than, you know, the thumbnail popping up on the Max homepage. I haven't even, I haven't seen any marketing for this series. What's even weirder is that while watching this show, I didn't recognize a single actor. There was never a moment when I said to myself, hey, that's that guy from that movie, or hey, she's from that commercial. Which is kind of refreshing not to see the same, like, four people, like, the same, like, four faces show up in, like, every single TV show. It's kind of nice not seeing Chris Pratt play everybody. I know that's not something that can really be helped, but it was just another thing that adds to the experience, I think, and the immersion. The show happened to come out at a pivotal time around the pandemic where there was a surge of Asian hate in our society. And it was cool to see a story all being told by Asian voices, uh, actors, writers, directors, producers. The show sheds so much light on something that isn't really talked about enough in Western media, and that's the historical racism towards Asian people in America. There's also a very prominent female perspective. Atoy, Mai Ling, Penelope Blake are all wonderfully written characters and add even more of a different voice and view of America beyond what we typically see from this time period. The show kind of just has everything. I mean, the casting is great, the cinematography is awesome, the performances are great, the writing is solid. It is a little something for everyone. And that song. Oh my god, that song.
Yes, the show was canceled by Max, and before that, it was canceled by Cinemax. But it found a new home, yet again, on Netflix. And even if it doesn't get renewed, it's still a damn good show, and well worth your time. And I highly recommend you check it out. I really hope they continue, though. I gotta know what happens next. If you don't know what to watch in February, I'll help you out. Watch this, not this. Espresso, but it's triple shy. I don't sweeten it. Y'all getting slapped on cause you sleeping in on God. Aside from me, I don't believe in shit. I'm done fucking, but she telling me to leave it in. A lot of blessings piling up that I ain't even wished for. No, left over for y'all. I'm locking the fridge door at the crib, cutting hits. I ran through the